In example two, we're asked to evaluate each of the following. And uh, the first one is 64 to the 2 thirds. So the 3 means the cube root of 64. And then we're going to square all that. So the cube root of 64, I, I, I could go back to my graph and calculate I wanted, but we've actually already done that one. That means what three numbers all the same multiplied as 64, and that's 4. And so that's 4, so the 4 is just squared now to give us 16. So 16 is uh, equal to 64 to the 2 thirds. For b, again the negative is out front here. So it's negative, and the 4 in the denominator means the 4th root of 16 raised to the power of 3. So the 4th root of 16 means what? Four numbers all the same multiply to give you 16. That certainly has to be a small number. It's 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So that in the brackets there is 2, and so we just have negative 2 cubed. And 2 cubed means 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So the answer is negative 8. For C, this means the fourth root of negative 16 and then cubed. And again, you cannot take the even root of a negative, so this is not, you can't evaluate that, so again, it, doesn't, it does not exist. For D, 20 to the power of 2 fifths means the fifth root of 20 squared. Now again, the fifth root of 20, we can't evaluate that uh, as a, a whole number, and so uh, I would go back to my calculator. And so now we could actually find the fifth root of 20 and then square it. That's what it would look like in my graphing calculator. And there's my 3.3145. Now you actually could do this too. You could actually evaluate 20 to the power of and type in 2 fifths. So we would just go 2 divided by 5. And that will give you the same thing. So for E here, now notice the exponent is negative, so that means the reciprocal of, and it would be the cube root of 125 raised to the power of 4. Now in your calculator, you need to now evaluate the cube root of 125. So what number multiplied by itself three times gives you 125. And that number is 5, because 5 times 5 is 25, times another 5 makes 125. So the answer to the cube root of 125 is 5. And it's raised to the power of 4. So we want to go 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, or evaluate 5 to the fourth, and that's 625. So that simplifies to 1 over 625. For f, the last one in example 2, the negative again means the reciprocal, so it's 1 over 100. Now, it's the square root of 100, and it's the square root, you do not have to put the 2 here, but it does mean the second root of 100, and then it's going to be cubed. So the square root of 100 is 10, so we have 1 over 10 cubed, and 10 cubed is 1,000, so we get 1 over 1,000. Last example in number 3 here, we're asked to determine the side length of a cube with a volume of 500 cubic centimeters. So for a, a perfect cube, when all sides are the same, the volume is just the length of a side cubed. Now I want to find the side if I know the volume. So I would take the cube root of both sides here to solve for s. So if v equals s cubed, s is equal to the cube root of v. And so we would stick our 500 in place of v here. So the side length is the cube root of 500. And so the cube root of 500 works out to be about 7.94. And so that's the side length for a cube that has a volume of 500 cubic centimeters, about 7.94 centimeters. And that's the end of the lesson.